Warning, some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. And if you by chance can't make it through this video, that's fine. We'll see you in the next one. For those that can stick around, let's get started. Currently, there is a border crisis between our southern border and those who use the border to pass into the United States. If you have followed me at all for any length of time, you will know that I'll do anything I can to help ensure that a child has all of the love and support they need growing up. We need to get these creeps who use these children off the streets to help keep them safe. I work hard behind the scenes nearly every day searching for missing kids via the internet, Instagram, Facebook, or other sources trying to find children who are in harm's way. I even have a Christmas fund that I not only use my own money and my kids use their money, but we have supporters like you who donate to help give kids who don't have a Christmas a gift. This isn't about the Christmas fund, so let's carry on. While watching some of the live feeds from the border at night, it's been pointed out that these children, many who look out of place, especially for the people that are with them, that when asked where the parents are by those helping us see what's going on, the coyotes' responses are, the mother left them, or the family left the kids and moved on. It's always some kind of excuse that they use to make people think that it's a legit reason. Now, if you have a trigger warning to children in bad situations, please either fast forward about 15 or so seconds or skip this video entirely. No hard feelings. This video isn't meant to trigger anyone. It's meant to bring awareness to what's going on in the world and my frustrations on why we can't slow it down or get help to slow it down or just do something about it. In this video that you'll see, these children look to be sleeping. They've been drugged. They're sedated. They don't even know what's going on. Check it out. So, remember I told you guys that they're going to say that? Yep. ¿Qué le pasó a la mamá? Me abandonó, lo dejamos, pues, preparamos. ¿Te abandonó? Sí, soy padre. ¿Y te dejó los dos niños? Sí. Ok. ¿Y cuántos años tienen los niños? Él tiene cuatro y ella tres. Four and three years old. Some of these kids are just weeks old. Yes, weeks old. Some of them dying because they fell in the water or they're dehydrated or starving or were brutally abused in ways that would just make your skin crawl. And I tell you, it better make your skin crawl to hear this crap happening or else you're on the wrong channel. Oh, and when looking for images to show during this video, this image right here is tied to a Newsweek article that states, Border Patrol kicked, punched migrant children threatens some with sexual abuse. For the record, I know a few Border Patrol agents and they are super nice, have kids, and would never do anything like this. So there is bad apples pretty much everywhere. Doesn't mean they all are. Now, I'm not going to win over any hearts here with the next statement that I'm going to make. However, I'm going to say it. I think porn should be banned from the United States. Hell, on a global scale. Yes, I said it, and I'll say it again. Porn, the addictive fantasy that reprograms the minds of so many. The industry where sex sells, marriages are ruined, families are torn apart, and people are pushed down rabbit holes further and further to get their stimulation that needs to consistently be more and more of a fantasy should be banned. I think our country promotes websites that show children in ways that should never be photographed. I think apps like TikTok and Instagram and other social platforms like Snapchat that allows kids to send nudes to other kids and even adults for a few seconds and then later gets deleted forever, unless a screenshot is taken by the receiver, which then can be distributed and, well, it goes from there. It all should be banned. This is the stuff that makes a girl kill, him, kill herself. Girls kill themselves. Kids kill themselves. I covered a video on this not too long ago, of the same subject where a beautiful young girl, Amanda Todd, was bullied so much from some prick getting her to show her breast, he screenshotted it and threatened that he would distribute it to her family and friends if, he, if she didn't do more of it and send it to him. Which was also used to further her pain. 
She couldn't take the pressure anymore, and it led to a downward spiral where she ended up killing herself. Kids nowadays don't even understand this kind of pressure until it happens. And then they get mad at us parents because we're trying to keep them away from this kind of stuff, away from the social media. We're trying to help protect them because we as adults know the stuff that can happen if they're, if they're a part of this. We try to protect our kids. At least a lot of us do. I, I don't understand. You'll see something here shortly that will just blow your mind. If this whole thing doesn't just blow your mind. Anyways, back to Amanda Todd. A news article from the BBC states, A Dutch man was sentenced to 11 years for blackmailing dozens of young women around the world into performing sex acts in front of webcams. Aiden C. 38 was found guilty of internet fraud and blackmail on Thursday in Amsterdam. He faces additional cyberbullying charges in Canada in connection with the online harassing of Amanda Todd, a 15-year-old girl who killed herself in 2012 after photos of her breasts were published online. A man who is identified only by his first name, and I wouldn't even say man, so let me just change this real quick. Live edit. This prick who is identified only by his first name because of Dutch privacy rules, which I think should be eliminated in this kind of event because he should have his name thrown out there for everybody. This guy was arrested in January of 2014. He was accused of harassing 34 women and five gay men from countries as far away as Britain, Canada, Norway, and United States. Now, this is just the people he, that they caught him talking to. You know there's more. There's got to be. There are so many innocent kids out there also who are using these platforms and being drooled over by these hungry animals that put your kids in danger. You don't even realize it. Apps like TikTok that show you and others around the world your area within a radius of your location. Great job. Now these predators know what town roughly your kids are in by the post they can see. Then you can see Posts of their dance rehearsals and gymnastics buildings with the names in the background. Easily Google searched. And all of these elements that put your kids at risk. All for what? To keep them entertained? To keep them socially happy? To keep you happy as a parent that you're showing off your kid for kudos or that you get them out of your hair for a little while? The picture you were looking at is from a video clip of an Instagram where this young lady, maybe 8 or 10 years old, is shaking her bottom. These sickos added comments like these, and to be quite forward with you, kids doing this should also be banned from these services. Look at this dude in glasses. I'm no good at Spanish, but you can kind of guess he's saying she's delicious. Correct me if I'm wrong. And the other comment that is talking about how nice her belly is and that she's sexy. What the hell? At least that's how I take it anyway don't understand Spanish. Come on, girls. You do not need validation from a bunch of perverts pretending to like you. Delete these apps and be a kid while you can. The world sucks and you have plenty of time to worry about that later after you're old enough to learn the truth about these pervs. Oh, and before we move on, I wanted so badly to leave their names on these posts so you could make them regret the comments they leave. However, I don't want to get in trouble for calling out these idiots by name. Also, this was the first one to pop up on my search when I clicked the magnifying glass. It doesn't even take searching to find these sick comments. Check it out. I feel that if the government wasn't into the billion dollar industry, they would have an easy reporting system that would give them 24 hour turnaround to block these sites from being accessed by our country. They would give a reward to those who found them sites to help clean up the streets by the web sluice like myself that love solving cases. There are again sites out there with pictures and videos that should have an easy way to report them. Quick turnaround and shutting them down without fear of repercussion for trying to help with getting this crap out of the internet. Did you know that if you look up things like 
helping to find and eliminate child sensitive media. The online lawyer suggests that you avoid this because many who have tried to help fighting this problem got caught up in the BS. Why is that? Is the government afraid that while we are web sleuthing, that we may find these kids on the missing list or in CPS custody? That we may break the cases of the missing kids in the CPS care by finding their videos and images? Yes, CPS is also involved in missing kids. And a high percentage of these kids missing from their care are trafficked, 87% of them. This was admitted by them. Now, I hope I'm not going to lose many of you on this because I don't know much of anything about a dark web out there. I've watched some YouTube University videos on people going to it and sharing what types of subjects are on there. Things like getting IDs, or social security cards, services, passwords, just a bunch of stuff. And quite honestly, I'd have to go back and see what type of other stuff was on it because I don't remember. Just watching these type of videos of people looking for simple things like email blaster programs, logins for programs that people have paid for, etc. makes me uneasy for myself and for those who made the video. Some were very uneasy just being there for the sake of making the video. And this sparked my interest on hacking, as I would love to assist in catching these idiots by shutting this down. However, in my searches, I was shut down pretty early on the idea of just zapping their web pages and shutting them down, even temporarily. Did you know that even if you zap or erase somebody's website that contains CP uh, or child bad stuff, that you can be charged with a crime? You are not even allowed to zap their web pages. Therefore, if you are one of them that does this and you're under the radar, Hats off to you. Just to note, none of the videos I saw in the dark web showed anyone doing anything wrong. They were all on YouTube, and we know YouTube's pretty strict. One of the things that you will hear about that is on the dark web is children. Watching true crime shows, I saw that there were pictures and videos there. I don't know if there are other services out there which... For the love of God, I hope not. Unfortunately, though, it's probably not the case. Which makes you stop and think, though. And I have questions. Things like, how are people finding other people to buy kids? Are they just sitting on their porch having coffee with grandma one day and say, oh, I gotta find me some new kids today? I'm sorry, it's not a joking matter. But seriously, what's wired in their head to think that this is okay? Why are some of the kids we know of go missing never reported? Or we don't even hear they are missing. From what I hear from the search engines in 2019-2020, these creeps would sell children from twenty dollars to $40,000 apiece. How in the hell do they get that kind of money for a kid that will eventually grow up and not be a kid? Who could eventually get them in trouble or have to be murdered, to stay safe or quiet. Do these assholes not think that far ahead? I guess not. Maybe it's just my brain that carries common sense enough to know that, and they lack the common sense by letting their desires feed their actions. I would like a brand new pickup truck. I'd also like a $20,000 camper to go with my $80,000 pickup truck so I, I could go camping with the family. I work and I can't afford that, but I'm not going to go steal one. I'm, common sense tells me this isn't a good idea. Why is it so hard for people to comprehend? Yet these creeps are non-working, or some of them are even business men and women elites, and they are buying people. It's so sick that did you know it's considered a billion dollar a year industry? Oh wait, I said that already. So I'm going to say it again. It's a billion dollar industry. And whatever gives them the reasons to think that this is okay. I'd like to have someone show up on my show and go over this to explain how in the hell these idiots get this mindset. And to explain why as a country we can't get the system in place to ban these websites. How are these sites masking their server content? they got to be somehow. 
Is there anything that we can do that doesn't involve repercussions for assisting in the cleanup of these sites? Internet lawyer suggestions even tell you that if you stumble across these sites by accident, to just forget it and move on. Because reporting it could get you in trouble. What kind of crap is that? That's like the ladies of the night being too afraid to tell an officer that she was raped because they would take her in for prostitution instead of trying to find the attacker who broke her ribs. Come on, guys. Get up to speed here. This shit's not right. I don't know jack about prostitution, whether it's legal or not, other than in Vegas, and I'm sure I've had my chances too, like many others, to try out the ladies of the night. But I'll tell you something, I'm not wired that way, and I'm not okay with it personally. However, these ladies are in many cases scared, beaten, afraid, and even killed because they were too scared to get help. And they shouldn't be afraid. Just like the web sleuths or general people who stumble across these sites shouldn't be afraid to report it. Shutting down these sites quickly and not allowing them to have further access would be a big help. Any help to get these kids off the screens of millions of adults feeding on the fantasies of their sick, twisted minds should be number one to the government who swears that it's doing all it can to prevent kids from being attacked emotionally and physically all while their protective services are doing all they can to make criminals out of good parents who are too defenseless to help themselves prove that they are good people. This right here is from EmbraceTexas.org. 86% of runaway children who are child trafficking victims are in the care of social services or the foster care system. Another way to say this is 86% of the kids who are in a foster care system that run away or run away or come up missing have been handed over or are a part of child trafficking now. Fun fact. Did you know that you can't sue a prosec- or prosecute a protection service worker or the protection service themselves? Even though they have a high power, they can easily take your life and crush you just because they had a bad day and they are protected by law and cannot be sued, much like a judge. At least this is from the research here in my home state. Let me know if your state's different. Another fun fact, many of the Child Protective Services workers don't even have kids. Some of them say they do, and some of them are honest and admit they don't, Some of them have family issues that make them not want to have kids, not like kids, and relate their issues to others as if it's the only way people are. These people should be helping, being proactive to ensure positive outcomes happened. But no, a majority of them, quite honestly, need to apply at a daycare for a day job and a factory for a night job so they can see what real working families deal with when they are tired and struggle to make it each day. How the hell are you going to know the struggles of a parent raising a kid if you don't have a kid to know the struggle? Yet yeah, you're going to send these parentless 20-year-olds out to families' houses to pry into their lives, lie about them, and get their kids taken away, who were falsely accused in some cases. And a lot of it is even just a power trip. And that, too, in itself is a story of its own. So let's move on. Years ago, there was a family of nudists, a mother and her children. She, the mom was the photographer, and in the name of art, she would take pictures of these kids, nude and in a country setting or nature setting. I think they were black and white or maybe color. Maybe both. I don't remember. It's been a few years, like 10 or 15, I think. And at the time, was able to be found on Google search about photography art or something. It did raise a huge stink around the internet, and the mother swore that her children were all okay with it. It was a lifestyle not to be ashamed of their body, as they were all beautiful in their own way. 
They were themselves the canvas, the artwork. There was a boy and two girls. Later in life, I looked up the family, and now the kids are older and able to have their own opinions. The boy wishes it was never done, that their bodies were not displayed for the whole world to see, that even though they were okay with it at the time, they were not so okay with it now and didn't understand that didn't didn't understand enough about life back then for consent even if they did have the power for consent as we most of us know once on the interwebs you can't take it back anyone can record it screenshot it use other devices or capture cards and i'm sure a whole stack of other things that i don't even know about now I know I've been on a few tangents here, but what it all comes down to is children. Why are these kids being brought to the U.S., or many that come from here, for the purpose of personal toys? Slavery, whatever else you want to call it. Why are some of the parents sacrificing their children for personal gain? There's a few criminal issues out there right now that are pretty high in the spotlight that A lot of us feel stuff like that's been done. It's not just an issue at our border. It's a worldwide issue that parents sell their children or have their children just to have grandchildren to sell. When did people turn into a commodity? Why can't we fix this? Kids are not animals. What in the hell is going on in our world? Do you also feel that there should be an easy way to block child sites quickly without repercussion for finding them? Do you know of a way to get the ball rolling to pressure the government to implement a service that would allow a quick ban of these web pages? Why isn't this a thing already? Why are we not as a country trying to ban this stuff from reaching the homes of those in our country? It definitely can't be an issue of the government control because that is the kind of control I want them to have. To help keep our country safe. Well, I can tell you statistically. Check this out. From the U.S. Department of Justice, each year an estimated of 14,500 to 17,500 foreign nationals are trafficked into the United States every year. Every year. Now, that's not the ones here. That is the ones being brought here. The number of U.S. citizens trafficked within the country each year is even higher, with an estimated 200,000 American children at risk of trafficking into the sex industry. And from what I understand, some of the American kids are brought out of the country, so they're not found. What is your thoughts on this? I'll be interested to see what all you have to say on this topic. So get those comments in. Feel free to add some comments on topics that you would like me to cover. I read every comment and I try to respond to to as many as I can. And sometimes I can't respond to them. I'll just hit the heart button so you know I saw it. Thanks to those who requested a bigger focus on trafficking and missing children. I'll be covering more of these in the future while we look for those on the missing children's list throughout the U.S. Thanks for sticking with me. And till next time, I am Wolfman with Wolfman Rants. Peace.